All right, guys and girls, uh, welcome to another how-to video with p 4 and Key. And today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your OBS or your slobs, which is a Streamlabs OBS. As you can see here, I'm, I've got Streamlabs OBS version 0.97 open. Um, and this is a blank canvas. There's nothing being done to this, uh, to this scene that I've got set up here. It's not displaying anything, and that's what we want. So I'm going to show you how to set this up properly with some basic uh, settings that are a good starting point and then you can customize them yourself. Bearing in mind that a lot of the settings that I'm going to show you are based off my computer specs and my internet connection and you're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking for yourself. So first things first, you always launch Streamlabs OBS uh, or regular OBS studio in administrator mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring over the Streamlabs OBS uh, desktop icon here. That shield means that it's running in administrator mode permanently. We're going to right click it, hit properties, come over to compatibility and you want to tick the run this program as an administrator box hit apply hit ok and that's that it will always launch in administrator mode now and right so next things next you want to sign in you want to click um, up here if it's not already signed in it'll bring up a box I'm not going to bring it up on this on this video because it'll show off um, my email address and stuff like that, the stuff that I use to sign in, and I don't want people to see that kind of information. That's a bit personal. So, yeah. It'll ask you to sign in if you stream to Twitch. Um, you'll you'll have to put in your Twitch information if you, if you stream to YouTube. It'll ask you to sign in through Google. Um, so, make sure you get that done. All right. Once you've got that done, we're going to move on to these two boxes here, scenes and sources. Now, this is exactly the same whether you do it on Streamlabs OBS or regular OBS Studio. Right? So we've got uh, our scene there on the, the left hand side here. And we're going to rename this to uh, hmm, oh. My spelling, scene zero, starting soon. We'll add another scene. Uh, with regular OBS Studio, you can just right click anywhere here and uh, create a new scene. And then we'll create scene one, um, which will be gameplay. Uh, we'll create another scene. Scene two. This one's gonna be gameplay again but with cam. You might not use a webcam, but in case you're planning to in the future, it's best to set this up now, um, which is a lot, which will be a lot easier for you. Then we're gonna create, oh, sorry, I'm keep right clicking. Then we're gonna create yet another scene, um, which will be scene three. And this is gonna be our intermission slash uh, BRB screen. I'm just gonna call it intermission. And then we're going to create a final scene, which is scene four. And this is ending stream. All right. Now you've got your scenes um, set up and stuff like that. We're going to have to add sources to them. Um, let's start with the start and soon screen. So normally we'd have... Um, an image playing and some music that would uh, come up. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're just gonna go over to the sources here while clicked on starting soon. And we're gonna add a new source to it. For the image, we're just gonna click image here and add source. And we're gonna actually name the sources. And this this is very crucial. A lot of people don't do this. And then later on when they're, they're trying to figure out what's going on with their, their, their slobs or their OBS, they don't know why it's not working, right? So this is the start and soon image. 
it's going to allow us to uh, browse our computer and pick a folder, right? So I have prepared some really crappy images here. And there's our starting soon uh, screen. It's going to go full screen and you can lock and unlock it and display and not display it. We're just going to keep it locked there at the top. And normally you would add some music or something to this as well. So we're going to click the plus sign again. And this time we're going to add a media source. All right. And uh, we're going to call this... Normally you would name this the name of the song. Then that way if you wanted to have multiple songs, you could. But we're just going to call this uh, intro music. Done. And again, we're allowed to pick a local file. And we can... I've got no music prepared in this folder. Um, let's go to the documents. And I'll go to my YouTube channel's um, stuff. And I've got a music folder here with some music that I actually use. Um, and we're just going to add Uprise. Stay right there. And... That music, believe it or not, right now, is actually playing. You can see that. But you can't hear it in this recording, and I can't hear it either. But the stream, when we're live, they can hear it. The reason that you can't hear it is so it doesn't create an audio loop in a, in your, your stream. It's the same thing with the ending stream. We're going to add a source, add an image... And we're going to uh, name this ending stream. And we'll add a new source. We'll browse. We'll come back to the, uh, the folder that we were using before. And then we'll end. We'll put the ending uh, image up. We're going to lock that. And we'll do the same again. Media source. And we'll just use the same music. Right, we'll just we'll just use the same music because it means going through the folders again, which we don't have to do. All right, and then we can just lock both of those because we don't need to edit them again. Uh, that just stops you from being able to change stuff on it um, and deleting it by accident. Um, our intermission screen. Normally, you'd have a screen that comes up saying a BRB or something like that. We're gonna. Name this image intermission. And we're going to add our intermission screen. And again, media source. We'd add some music. It would be, um, you can see there, it's playing. And it doesn't play when you swap scenes. So if I was to swap between start and soon and gameplay, then... It won't continue playing while you're not in that scene. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, you just leave it running in a loop. In fact, let's just double check to make sure it's in a loop. Oh. And my Streamlabs has slightly frozen a second there while it tries to bring it up. Yeah, so we right-clicked it and we brought up properties. If you just tick that loop button and then click OK and that will... When the song ends, it will automatically start playing again, which is generally what you want. <coughs> so I do apologise, I have not been well. Right, so, what else do we need to do? We've still got um, some stuff for the scenes to do. We've got nothing in gameplay, and we've got nothing in the webcam. So let's, let's uh, fix the webcam stuff first, shall we? And then I can get that out of the road. Um, so we're going to add a source here. Um, no, see, normally you would have gameplay and stuff here, but we'll get to that very soon. For now, though, I just want to get the um, the source added for the webcam and stuff. So we're going to add an image. If you want to have um, a box around your webcam or something, then this is how you would do that. And we'll name this webcam uh, box. And we add new source, we browse, and I've already got my webcam overlay that I use on my P4YN streams here, which is great. And we're going to lock that. 
Now we're going to add a new source again, but this time it's a video capture device. Um, other video capture devices would be your capture cards, your hubbage, your um, Elgato's, stuff like that. But video capture device, and I'm going to name this one webcam. And it's going to detect my webcam. As you can see here, it's popped up on the screen. Hi. Um, yes, I don't have the background stuff set up. I do apologize for that. But... Um, it's saying here it's using the default uh, devices uh, resolution, which that is not correct at all. Um, I want to put that in 1280 by 720. And we're going to click done. And now, as you can see, that is appearing over the top of the box, which is not something that we wanted uh, to do. So we're going to unlock this and we're just going to drag the webcam down underneath it. And we're going to leave the webcam box locked so we don't um, mess with that. Now, as you can see, that webcam box is appearing over the top. So we just resize our webcam box. And line it up. And unclick. And there you go. The webcam is now behind the box in the overlay. And you make sure that these two stay at the top. When you add a new source, like your gameplay, it will always go to the top of the list. And what you do is you just drag it down underneath those two and your webcam and your webcam box on your overlay will stay over the top of your gameplay. And we just lock that. And now we can't, we can't click the webcam and we can't manipulate the size on it or anything like that because the settings are locked. So let's come off this because I don't like sitting on the screen. Um, some people might want to create another intermission screen. Um, but this time have the webcam on there. And <clears throat> we can do that right now. So I'm going to click the uh, the ending soon thing. And I'm going to rename this to uh, scene 5. And I'm going to get rid of that uh, end number in brackets. And I'm just going to click done. And now you see we're missing a scene four. So let's duplicate this scene. And we're going to add this as scene four intermission with cam. And then we can just reorder the scenes as we like. As you can see here, we have um, our sources already added. <coughs> I do apologize. The music, it doesn't matter where it appears. but um, So that, that can like literally appear at the bottom of the list as long as the image is up there. Um, as long as the webcam source and the other source, uh, the webcam overlay box, um, are above intermission image, then that's fine. We're just going to click Add. Let's add an, our image for the, uh, the webcam box. That's going to appear just up there in the top right now. We're going to lock that into place so we don't uh, mess with it. Add again, add the video capture device. And instead of typing in webcam, we're just going to click the webcam here. And then we can manipulate its size. Put it inside that little box. Make sure the webcam box is above it in the list. And then just pull that webcam up a bit. And lock that and there you go. You could make this a lot bigger. You would have to obviously adjust the um, the image size for the webcam box because if you were to stretch that out, it would look big, um, blurred and pixelated. We can resize that in Photoshop if you're quite knowledgeable that way. Um, if not, then I would suggest learning. Using Photoshop is um, extremely valuable um, when you're uh, streaming and stuff like that. It enables you to create your own th uh, overlays, your own thumbnails. Everything I've done for the P4YN over the stream has all been made by me. Um, I had to learn how to use Photoshop to do that. Uh, I had to learn where to get um, royalty-free images from and stuff that I could use. And then I had to buy certain things to be able to use um, assets from it. So yeah, Photoshop is brilliant. So let's go back to gameplay now. Now you've got um, six sources set up. 
and swapping between them is going to be extremely painful. Um, especially if you only have one monitor. So let's set up some hotkeys. We're going to click settings in the top right um, on OBS uh, Studio. It will be down here in the bottom right. Um, just click settings and on the left hand side you'll see hotkeys. Now here's what I do and the way I have mine set up. So you start and, stream, uh, start and stop streaming. Use your left control and your number one. Stop streaming, number two, start recording, number three, and stop recording, number four. <coughs> Pardon me, I do not mess around with um, studio mode and stuff. And what we want to do is we want to do the switch scene. Um, switch to scene, which is here. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the left control again, but I'm going to match the number of the scene up with the number on the numpad. So that will be left control and numpad zero. Scene four, left control, numpad four. Scene two, you get the idea. This way, I'll never forget what scene goes to where, to what number. Now, here's what we're gonna do as well with the hotkeys. We're gonna ignore the web, uh, the webcam. We're gonna ignore the intro music, the mic. We're going to set this to left control and nine for mute and unmute, but we're not just going to do it for the mic. We're also going to do it for the desktop audio. And then we're done. So now what you'll see is you can see uh, my mic arc here going up when I'm speaking into the stream mic. If I press control and nine, it mutes everything, including the desktop audio. Now, if I want to swap scenes, they say it'll go to scene uh, zero, starting soon, left control, numpad zero. And now you'll see two volume bars going up, the mic and the intro music. But watch what happens when I mute the mic. See, the intro music actually continues playing which is uh, pretty awesome. So that means you can mute your mic um, to the stream and your desktop audio. So any voice chat that you're in, which would be a Discord or something along those lines. Discord will be muted and your desktop audio will be muted and your microphone will be muted. The stream will only hear the intro music, which means you can continue talking on Discord. Uh, Discord. And then when you switch to scene one, gameplay, you just unmute and do your intro like normal. And there's your hotkey set up. So now that that's done, um, we will run some um, game sources. I need to find something that I can actually uh, run on the computer that is really low, um, like uh, a low resource running game because my computer is not the best. So let's uh let's load up Fallout 2. I know this is like a really old game. I'm sorry, but uh Steam's gotta sign in and stuff, and that's gonna load up. Um I know that uh it's like a really old game, but it should it should serve our purposes for what we want to do with it. And here we go. It's loading up now. So oh Fallout is now running on the uh, the second monitor. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a source. You should do this for all gameplay, by the way. Any game that you add. We're going to add a source and we're going to add game capture. We're going to name it the name of the game. And we're going to click done. Now, this is the interesting bit. On the mode... You want to click the drop down thing and you want to tell it to capture a specific window. Do this once the game is running, right? This will now give you a second option for the window. And this time you want to select your Fallout 2 well, or your game.exe. 
and then you've got um, this tick box here which will allow you to capture steam overlays and stuff like that yeah, your anti-cheat hook compatibility <coughs> which prevents um, certain games from registering the software as anti-cheat and whether you want to capture your cursor or not you see here that it's, um, it's actually pulsing and it's not showing up and that is a problem with the game because the game has actually uh, crashed on my end but let's skip oh <laughs> I, sorry I actually closed the game now. <laughs> right uh, let's just relaunch that So as you can see here, the game's actually now capturing. Uh, it's capturing a full screen. When you get that error that was just up there where the box doesn't look full screen and it's pulsing, it's because you haven't alt tabbed into the game yet and that causes issues. Um, if you're running two monitors and you've got Streamlabs OBS uh, set up, then it can cause a little bit of an issue if you run the game in a full screen fake windowed, then you can actually alt tab out of the game without the game closing down and minimizing. But the the reason why I tell you to capture a specific window is because when you alt tab out of the game, um, the game will minimize. And if you're capturing your entire desktop, people will see whatever's on your desktop or if you've got a private chat open or something like that. So tell it to capture a specific screen. We're just going to swap scenes now. I'm not going. I've just better click that. We don't need to click it. We can swap scenes like this. So let's click this plus symbol, and we're going to add the game capture, and we're going to double click Fallout Two. <coughs> Pardon me, which has put Fallout Two to the top, and as you can see there, we've got that um, that box issue again. Let's Alt Tab back into Fallout Two. There we go. And there you go. So now, what we want to do, I can bring up my Steam overlay on Fallout 2, I think. But it's not actually allowing me. I think it's because it's an old game. But even so, there we go. I've all tabbed back out. I've come back over to here. Oh my god, sorry. I'm sorry. It is so hot in the UK right now. Um, we're just going to lock that. And then that way we can't manipulate the, uh, the game or anything like that. But that's how you'll add all your games. You add it as um, a specific window, choose the EXE out of the list, alt-tab into the game, alt-tab back out, and it should appear on um, OBS, whether it's Streamlabs or Studio. Right, so now we've added all of our scenes and sources. We've done um, our hotkeys. Let's go through and do our video settings, and I'm going to close down um, Fallout. Right now. Because we don't need that up now. <coughs> right, let's go into the settings and we'll do our video settings and stuff. So we don't really need anything on the front on this end here. Like anything at all. Um, stream is like your streaming servers and entering your stream key. I'm not going to show you um, how to get... The stream key you should already know this information by now um, on youtube you go to your creator studio go to um, live streaming and it'll be at the bottom left of the screen on twitch you go through your dashboard and you'll find it in there it is a secure thing don't give anybody it it's why i'm not bringing it up on mine because i don't want it to accidentally be shown to anybody or anything like that output right output is all your settings for your video and stuff like that. So let's uh, feel free to click your output mode and change that over to advanced. And we'll go through the streaming settings. Right. If you're um, a GTX user like me, um, an NVIDIA GTX user, your encoder, you want to change it from software x264 to NVENC. If you're an EMD user, then you, you'll have another one called um, ENC, ANC. 
I'm pretty sure it's Ank or Amk. Uh, EMC. But either way, it'll be very similar. Do not use Software X264. It is a really good codec, but at the same time, if your computer is not an absolute beast, it will cause massive uh, problems on your stream. Switch over to MVENC or uh, EM EMC. And now we're going to go down here. Right, so there's something else I've got to show you. Here is my a screenshot of my speed test results. And if you want to use the same website as me, you use, uh, just go over to speedtest.net. No need to put in a www dot or anything like that, just speedtest.net. It's name's in the top left there. And just click the go button. So my download uh, is irrelevant. Uh, what we're looking for is the upload in megabytes per second. And to stream at a, a decent rate, you're going to need upwards of eight. Right? And this is this is why I say this. If you're streaming in 720 output, maybe not so bad. Um, you you'll probably get away with uh, six or something. But really, recommended eight and above for high quality. And we're we're going to go over that now. So I use the bit rate of six thousand, and six thousand is good enough for 1080p gameplay. To be clear, right? People will tell you to go higher. <clears throat> I'm telling you not to go higher. And the reason for that is, if your followers or subscribers are watching you and they don't have a really good internet connection and your bit rate is super high, the video's going to buffer for them constantly. Or they're going to have to watch it in like 480p or 240p or something like that. So think about what you want is a nice balance between quality and speed for the for your viewers. It's pointless having the, the best quality in the world if your viewers can't uh, watch it. Um, put your keyframe interval over to 2 in seconds. I keep my preset quality uh, on high, and I put the profile on high. And it all it does is just make sure that um, the computer knows to run uh, slobs or OBS in high mode. So it, it, it gets priority on the processor. Um, I honestly I can't remember why I had to put the level as four point two, but all I know is that it's the same with the keyframe intervals. Um, this is just stuff that you pick up over the over the years. Um, all I know is that they when I put them in, my quality on my stream and stuff, um, I stopped getting stutter in the video. Same with the B frames on two. So if you want to go ahead and just copy those settings, if you watch your stream and your stream is very clear but it's stuttering drop your bit rate drop it 500 at a time until your stream stops stuttering and then look at your quality and see if the the quality is um if the quality is degraded that much with the uh, the drop in bit rate and then make sure to check your um your uh, sorry Check your upload on your speed test. I pay for a really high internet connection because I want that extra upload speed to, to make sure that it, it, when I stream, it's going to be not the internet that's the problem. It's just the PC parts. Um, and for recording, just leave that on standard. Choose your recording path where you want your files to go out to. Um, the ref the format is up to you, right? I use MP4, and that's the the format that YouTube recommends that you record in. There's a lot of people that record in MKV, and the reason for that is um, if the software crashes while you're recording, an MP4 file cannot be recovered if it goes corrupt, whereas an MKV file can be recovered. But as far as I'm aware, they are higher file size. So make sure you've got a lot of storage if you're going to be recording the MKV. I just stick with MP4. Because um, I just I don't really edit my videos. I record it all raw. You get to see me make mistakes. And if I make a mistake, then so be it. I don't see the point in editing out my mistakes. 
Again, um, the codec that you want to use, not Software X264, but NVENC. All right. Your rate control will start on a VBR. And what you want to swap it to is CQP. And you want to put the second box down from 23 to 22. Right. And what CQP does is it maintains the same video quality the whole time that you're streaming or recording. Right. So your recorded footage, um, whatever you see on your screen is what you're getting. And I don't fully understand the ins and outs of it, but it has worked for me. And I've read hundreds of guides online. I've signed up for web dodgy websites and I've had to pay monthly subscriptions to get in and read tutorials and stuff like that. And this is what works. And I'm recording the video so that you guys don't have to pay for things. You don't have to pay to get into closed communities to record stuff. All this information should be made free. And then we've got the keyframe intervals and stuff like that. And they're all the same. Here I've got the GPU on minus one. And I actually can't remember doing that. I think that might be default. So, yeah. Oh, I think I just, yeah, scroll wheel. See what I tell you. Errors. And you'll see it all because I don't edit the video. So... I don't mess with the audio tracks here because they're, honestly, they're perfectly fine. Audio here on the left-hand side is where you're going to see what your your audio devices are. If you want to set up the different audio devices and stuff like that. Um, mic 1, um, I use the stream mic. I never add mic 2 or mic 3. <coughs> and if you have a webcam, then... You want to go into your control panel. You want to go to your device manager. You want to find the microphone that's part of your webcam and just disable it. Provided that you're not using that as your microphone for streaming, which I hope to God that you're not. All right. Oh, no, I should have done that. So pick whichever device is your, um, your stream, your, like your microphone that you're going to be using for your stream and stick with that one. I just leave desktop audio and stuff exactly what it is. I don't have speakers for my computer. I've, I use headphones all the time. And I just use the default audio device. Right, so your video is your canvas, right? Base canvas size, the top one here. You want that whatever your resolution is. So if you're playing at a 1920 by 1080 resolution or 1080p on your desktop and in your games... You want your base canvas to be 1920 by 1080. Right? Your output resolution, that is what the the viewers see. So, um, if 1080p is becoming too much for your, uh, for your internet connection, this is where you'll change it. I can play in 1080p and you might not have any issues on your end while you're playing the game, but if it's getting choppy for the viewers or if the this, the video's buffering a lot, just drop this down. 1280 by 720. And you'll get some... Uh, thingy. The downscale filter starts uh, at Lancos, sharpening scale. Some people's will start off at um, bicubic. Sharp and skin, uh, 16 samples. I just leave this on Langsos. Yeah, I can't, I literally cannot see that word. And your common FPS value, you can change um, if you want to limit your output FPS. Which most people don't. Most people want to go for the highest FPS possible. Lock it at 60. It doesn't need to go any different. And we've done the hotkeys already. Advanced, right? So, we don't need to worry about the video or the audio but the stream delay. So, as I said before, I run the process priority in high. Um, you can run it at whatever you want. I keep it in high because it... The game will crash before Streamlabs does. And I don't want Streamlabs to crash and freak the whole stream. <coughs> I do apologise, honestly. I've not been well the last couple of days and I'm trying to record these videos. So, leave that on high. Um, you always want your game to crash before you want your software to crash. The game can be reopened 
reconnecting your stream, changing the title, that's a pain in the arse. Um, and as for stream delay, if you want to use a built-in stream delay, go right ahead. I don't. Um, and as for this preserved cutoff point, increased delay when re uh, reconnecting, you don't need that. I, I, I don't need it at all. Um, I always end my streams with an end and soon screen, and I let that run for a couple of minutes before I shut the, screen, the stream down and stuff like that. It's not needed. And the delay... If you're playing um, a game like uh, Armour, DZ, uh, stuff where you can be stream sniped, yeah, add a delay. Add a delay. But I don't play a lot of those games, um, not anymore anyway, and I don't stream them at all. So, yeah. If you want to add your delay, add it here. If not, then you're fine. Scene collections, you don't need to worry about this. It's all a work in progress, notifications, yeah. Uh, these just enable the stuff down here. Tells you how much your CPU you're using, your uh, FPS, drop frames, stuff like that. The bottom of that bar is really helpful. Appearance. Night mode. Um, some people might realise that my say... Uh, this is the way Streamlabs OBS is supposed to look. I like my night mode on. You might want to do that first. And I uh, don't really bother with remote control. And that's your settings done for your recording and your streaming. Um, overlays, right? Um, we've already shown. I've already shown you how to do your overlays. It's the same as adding in the webcam and stuff like that. I'll add one um, if I have one. I think. Um, let's take a look, shall we? Let's add an image. Um, I actually, funny enough, I actually made an overlay for a friend um, a couple of days ago. So let's add his in. Um, I'm sure he'll be happy to let me use it. Um, add new source. So you're adding these in as an image. Um, and there's not really a lot else to say about that. They're literally just an image and they don't have the background. They have a clear transparent background in Photoshop. So let's browse this, and uh, we're going to go back to the desktop again. And one breads overlay. There you go. And then you move that around. The background is indeed clear, and you want to keep it over the top of your gameplay. So your games always go down at the bottom of the list. You can create a folder if you really want to. Um, I don't, because I, I, I just don't. I've never liked it. Um... But I know a lot of people that do create the folders, and basically, you could um, you could name this overlay. And oh, we just drag and drop them in there, and then that just keeps them nice and neat there. And if I move one thing, it should move them all. But they're all locked, so keeping that uh, nice and clean there, right? And the last thing that we need to do is notifications. <coughs> also known as your widgets. And for that, we're going to go over to the dashboard. In the top left corner here. Um, OBS Studio users will have to do this through the uh, Streamlabs website. So go to the Streamlabs website, just a quick Google search. Um, sign in with either your Twitch account or your YouTube account. And everything will look the same on the website as it does here. So what you want to do is, we're just going to ignore that My Account stuff. Um, and we're going to come down here to Widgets. I'm trying to minimize that, but it doesn't seem to want to let me. Nope. And what you're going to, anyway, Widgets on the left-hand side. And what you want to find is your Alert Box. And here it's here. All right. We're going to ignore all this crap at the top. It's not needed for now. Um, and what is needed is these tick boxes here, right? So here's your general settings for your widgets. Now, if you're just starting out, um, your options might be a little bit different here with um, subscribers, sponsors, super chat, and merch. Um, specifically, sponsors and super chat. They are YouTube specific, and I'm signed in to my YouTube account. So Twitch, you won't have these. 
your subscribers will be named followers um, and then you'll have like tips and bits and stuff but it's all the same premise I only need to show you one for you to understand how they all work and we're going to do this with um, the, uh, subscribers. We'll do this with subscribers because it's easier. All right. So you want to make sure that your subscriber alert is enabled and your layout. Right. So this is how stuff's going to appear. It is. It appears on my uh, my screen here. I've created um, a custom little box that says you're awesome when someone subscribes to me. Um, if we go back over to the editor and I click uh, test widgets here and I click subscriber. And of course, it's not going to work because I haven't added it. Sorry. Right. Um, let's do this bit again. We're going to come to the alert box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to untick merch because I don't have merch. Um, I don't have super chat and I don't have sponsors on uh, YouTube. And that will create a custom URL. Right. I'm going to copy the URL there. I want to go back to the editor and on the game player. I'm going to add a browser source, right? And I'm going to call this um, widget alerts. I couldn't resize that box and stuff um, in a little bit. Um, I forgot what I usually have it as the URL. We're just going to paste that in and click done, right? Uh, widget alerts. Let's move that up there. Now let's test the subscriber widget. There we go. We might want the height um, to be uh, a lot lower than that. So I'm going to put that as 240 and click done. Let's try that again. Subscriber. There we go. All right. Dashboard. And alerts. All right. You'll notice that these have um, been ticked again. We don't have to worry about that anymore because we've already created the the URL. So we're going to go back to um, subscribers here. So as you've seen before, um, a custom the image came down from the top of the screen and a bit of text underneath it. That was the alert animation that I chose. I chose for the um, the image to be above the text. Um, that one is the image behind the text and the image off to the left of the text. Um, but the animations, there's quite a lot of them. And you, whatever you do for the animation in, you want to do the opposite for out. So I like mine to slide in from the top and then slide out up out the, uh, the screen. You can um, put a, a custom message template if you want to. With the, the, it uses the, the HTML code or whatever it is. I don't use any of that, I just leave that default. If you want to add a text animation, feel free. This is the bit um, that's interesting. If I click change media, you can actually um, upload your images. Um, it's not actually showing the rest of my images and stuff on sound. But it has like a lot of bonus sounds and stuff that you can um, you can actually experiment with. And they provide like a lot of um, static images and moving images and GIFs and stuff for you to choose from. Uh, so you just pick whatever you like. If you want to upload your custom stuff, you can feel free. Click the, uh, you can either drag and drop to that box or you can click it and upload some stuff. Um, the sound of your volume. Ah, right. The sound that I'm using is a le is called Level Up. As you can see there, level up dot OGG. You need to convert, if you want to use your own audio files, you have to first make sure that the audio is the length of the duration. So your alert duration here, mine set to 8 seconds, that's how long it stays on screen from start to finish. If you want to play a little bit of custom music, you have to select 8 seconds worth or whatever you select your duration to be. I chose 8 seconds, so if I want to upload custom music, I have to have 8 seconds only. Otherwise, the alert will stay on the screen for as long as the music is playing. And then that backlogs all your other alerts and some of them get skipped and stuff like that. And you really don't want that. <coughs> also, you need to convert your um, your audio files into dot, uh, .ogg because other ones just will not work. Um, I don't use anything to do with uh, custom HTML or CSS. 
I just no. It also allows um other people to use it in their messages and stuff like that, and I just I don't allow allow any of that. And then the font settings, I obviously I use the font Orbitron. I've I use that for everything. The font size, um, how thick the font is, and what your text colors are going to be. And then if you want to set up multiple variations, so it doesn't always project the same image or the same music, you can do that with these here. And once you're done with it, you just save your settings, and it will all be attached to the URL behind here. You just click copy and go do a browser source like I showed you earlier on. Click your test widgets button. Come back to your editor. You'll notice that sponsor doesn't want to work when I clicked it. Right? Sponsor doesn't work. Super chat doesn't work because the URL that I used didn't have the boxes ticked. Um, if you have those boxes ticked when you create your URL and you don't have those features unlocked on your YouTube channel or your Twitch channel, then all of your alerts won't work. There is another way to add the widget alerts to the um, the sources, like adding an actual widget itself. But I honestly do not see the point if you don't have um, sponsors enabled and super chat enabled for YouTube users. Um, if you want to be able to get your donations and stuff to, to appear on there, you'll need to go and do your donation settings. Um, you can do that through Slobs OBS or go to the website and do that. Link up your uh, PayPal and then it Tell them what um uh tell them what um payment methods you wish to accept, and then they'll tell you whether people can claim money back from certain um certain payment methods and stuff like that. And then it's up to you to decide whether you want them or not. All in all, that's about as much as you need to know um about setting up Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, and in the very least. These are the basic settings that you should set up and then you can customize them to your own liking. You can read your own tutorials online, stuff like that. But provided you've got a decent internet connection with a decent upload speed and a mid, like a mid-ranged gaming PC, these settings should do you perfectly fine. And you'd be surprised how many people I actually get asking me for help on Discord. You'd be surprised how many of the the streamers within the communities that I'm uh, I'm involved with through Discord, um, Mr. Rickett, Elizabeth Cat, Longs, One Bread, uh, One Bread, uh, and numerous others to say the least, um, actually have either my settings or part of my settings on their Streamlabs OBS or their OBS Studio. Um, and it seems to do all them just fine and they make tweaks here and there and stuff like that. I could have shown you how to use the themes and stuff, but honestly, I don't recommend using them because the themes are built to the author's um, resolution size. So if you want to use a theme and it turns out that theme is 720p only, you have to stream in 720p, otherwise it's going to look fucked up on your screen. And nobody wants that. I would always recommend that you learn to custom make things yourself. The The learning experience that you'll get from it would, would honestly, it's far better than using someone else's materials. That being said, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I, at the very least, I hope that it was educational for you. I hope that it... Whatever it is that you're trying to do with uh, Streamlabs OBS or with uh, normal OBS, I hope it works out for you. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd be so kind to hit that like button if you liked it, and hit the dislike button if you didn't like it. That's what it's there for. If you'd like to get in contact with myself or anyone else from P4YN, or even learn about some of the communities that I'm involved with, then you can find the links in the social media description down below. We have the Discord, we have a neglected, uh, neglected Facebook page, and we have a Twitter. 
There's also a list of awesome people, uh, their YouTube links, and we also have some uh, the P4YM members' uh, YouTube links down there as well. So make sure to check those out. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video.